Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation I want to tell you about the iTeach Fundamentals Rotor version of the Fundamentals Simulator. So here it is. Now what we're going to do with this simulator is look at the very most basic area of the time waveform but we're going to do it in terms of this machine here. We're going to take a measurement right on that green bearing that you can see moving around here. We've simulated the situation where there's you know a bit of a wobble in that shaft there. We're going to have a look at what the uh, waveform would look like and we're going to take it from this vibration sensor. Now if we were able to get inside that bearing and look at the shaft it may to the naked eye look like it's not really moving at all. So right now we're looking down the line of the shaft and it's not moving. But if we could examine it much, much more closely, it, it is moving. If the shaft is uh, and the, the fan is out of balance or there's a bent shaft or something like that, the shaft will be moving in that circular motion that you can see there. And the right type of vibration sensor is going to pick that up. But rather than talking about vibration sensors, in this simulator, we have a dial indicator. You see the movement of the shaft. In this case, we're focusing on the movement in the horizontal direction. You can see it moving from side to side to side. And that's all we're really concerned about. Um, now what we've got is a, is a dial indicator. So as the shaft moves to the right, which it's doing now, the needle, the, the plunger gets pushed in, the needle uh, moves in a positive direction, and as the shaft moves across to the left, the needle moves in the opposite direction. And that should be a familiar concept to most people, that uh, dial indicators represent a change of displacement or a change of distance. And by having it attached to a shaft that's moving this much, we would see the needle move back and forward as long as the shaft isn't turning so fast that it loses contact or something like that. But anyway, so now we can see that there is movement in that shaft. So let's take it one step further. What if we had a good old fashioned chart recorder? They use these in, in lots of plants still today, um, but of course there's electronic measurement systems instead. When you look at those seismograph charts when there's an earthquake, this is the same sort of thing they're, they're doing. What we've done though is we've taken the needle of the dial indicator and we've moved a blue pen up and down in sync with the needle swinging back and forward. And if we actually start the chart recorder, look what happens that blue pen which you can see is still just moving up and down moving up and down in line with the uh, needle of the dial indicator um, it leaves a pattern on the chart and that pattern is called a sine wave that waveform that we see there represents one single frequency and that frequency corresponds to the rotating speed of this shaft. Now there's a few things we can do. If I just click down and hold this red line right about the top of that wave there, you can see the little indicator that's appeared at the top which tells us you know, what the frequency is and so on, but we don't need to go into all the details. But the point is, what we are seeing here is a passage of time and we can see how many cycles occur within that passage of time. So it allows us to describe the basics of frequency and of course here we have amplitude. So what I can do is add a couple more uh, controls to the simulator now and I can speed up the shaft. Now the shaft's going faster. There it is as it spins. It, the way we're using the demonstrator right now, the simulator right now, the amount of movement is staying the same. So when I slow it down, if you look at the shaft, it almost reaches the edge of this box in the background. And when I speed it up, it's still moving exactly the same amount. It's just doing it more quickly because the shaft is rotating more quickly. And the needle therefore will move the same distance. And as you can see, the blue pen is traveling up and down uh, with the same amplitude representing the same distance, but now it does it more quickly. And you can see the cycles bunch together. So with higher speed, we get a higher frequency more of these cycles within the time represented by the passage of the chart. And again, we can say, well, how long does it take 
for this chart to move. You can see sort of the red line staying there and at the top we're timing how long it takes. So you can see we do have a passage of time there and if I slow it down it takes much longer to complete one cycle if I speed it up. So it's obviously there to describe the most basic part of the time waveform and the term frequency cycles per second or cycles per minute or revolutions of the shaft per minute. Now what I can also do is say let's let's make the movement much smaller. So there's a very small movement of the shaft now. You can see it's not moving very much and therefore the waveform amplitude is much lower. But the frequency hasn't changed. If I make it go faster, I make it go slower, I'm not changing the number of cycles, just the amplitude of the cycle. And of course, we could talk about peak to peak and RMS and averaging and all, uh, not averaging, but RMS peak to peak and zero to peak readings, what they mean, but uh, we do that separately. So we've got amplitude, we've got speed. A couple more things we can do with this, or just back off that speed a little bit. Now it's acting a little more realistically if it was out of balance. So if there's, uh, if it's out of balance and that's the only reason for the vibration, if you have it rotate more slowly, the out of balance forces are not as great and we don't see as much amplitude. If I speed it up, we get much more amplitude. In fact, with unbalanced forces, if you double the speed, the vibration goes up by a factor of four. There's a squared relationship there. We can do a few more things. Rather than using dial indicators, we can say, well, what if we had a vibration sensor that could sense what that distance was there as it, as it changed? And we would get an electronic version of exactly the same waveform. And we can introduce, well, what if instead of measuring the displacement, it measured the velocity? How quickly is that shaft moving back and forward? It has a velocity. It starts from zero, speeds up, and then slows down as it gets close to the edge, and then speeds away, and then slows down and speeds up, and, and so on, back and forward. Then we can look at acceleration. It has to accelerate to get up to that higher speed and then decelerate to stop. Again, we're only looking at that horizontal movement there. Now, another thing we can do is say, well, what if we were looking at not just the shaft movement, but the fan itself? Remember, this is the, the fan that we started with. And I'll just back that off so it's a bit easier to see those, those waveforms. Um, in fact, I'll go back to motion the uh, version where I can control the amplitude and everything myself. Now, instead of it, uh, the vibration changing once per revolution, we have 10 blades on the fan. So 10 times per revolution, we're getting that foo, 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 as a blade goes past where the vibration sensor is. That vibration gets transmitted to the bearing where the uh, vibration sensor is. So if this there's always going to be some vibration from that, but if there was a problem with the flow or whatever, then that vibration gets stronger. So here we've got the vibration just due to the shaft turning. Here we've got the vibration just due to the fan turning, and we can demonstrate the two added together. Now I've got the vibration of the shaft, and superimposed on top of that is the vibration due to the fan blades turning and creating pulsations. So there's a lot we can talk about. We can you know, play around with this for quite a while to explain the real fundamentals of the vibration, the addition of two frequencies to each other, and an amplitude and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation of I Teach Fundamentals. And uh, please look at our website if you have uh, any interest in other uh, presentations as a MyMobius free member or any of our training courses and so on. Thanks for taking the time to look at this presentation.